Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14, presented by Bearded Iris, here to recap Tennessee's win over Duke in the NCAA tournament, Blake. Ball's headed to the Sweet 16 against either FAU or Fairleigh Dickinson. Boy, it, it's hard to say enough good things about how Tennessee played today. I think they got the, the kind of game they wanted. They got rebound rebounding out of a lot of people. They got Olivia Kamwa was – maybe had the best game of his career and Tennessee knocks off a red hot Duke team and we'll live to play another day. Yeah. Not good for Chris's bracket, but uh, good for the balls no. and, and Rick Barnes. Uh, I, I, I told you, I told you guys be hesitant to Duke, but look, I was with you. We, we said going into it, it's who do you trust more at that moment? And when we saw these two teams play their first NCAA tournament game, I think, you know, a lot of people were looking at this and wondering, boy, um, can Tennessee put together the type of offensive performance they may need against Duke? Well, here's what we also knew, and we said this in the preview. We know Tennessee can put in a great defensive performance, and I think you just expect that now, no matter who they're playing. But it's just, would they have any of those just long stretches where nobody on the floor could score? Well, no. They, they didn't have those today, and that's why we've said all season – when they don't have those, they are good enough to beat anybody. We've seen that. Um, you know, we talked about all the good wins they have. When they can just use their defense to shut teams down and also hit shots consistently, they are one of the best teams in the country. And it's just that combination has not always been there, especially down the stretch for this team. And so, yes, it comes at the right time here. Um, you know, knock down nine threes. I thought that was just crucial you know in a game like this where you're you're i mean we, we said that too i think going in duke was duke's not a great shooting team um you know in terms of just they're kind of middle of the road when it comes to three-point shooting don't get a ton of their points from three so you kind of knew if tennessee could just make some shots and you knew you were going to be able to sort of bank on their defense stepping up with a pretty good game here it was just finding those points and, and they found olivier Gamba, by the way member of our Southeastern 14 all underrated team uh, this season. Uh, hey, did, did one of us pick him in their in their draft? I think you did, didn't you? I believe I did. Well, don't I knew the answer. I'm just making sure you knew I mean, it. Don't, don't knock me. I mean, it was the draft. I, I could have picked him, but you picked him first. You could have so picked him. I could have picked him. But no, I, what, he tied career high, 27 points in this game. Um, and look, that's what we say about March. Every Think about every preview, every reaction video we've done so far. We've always said it's you got to have someone that just steps up with those big games. And Tennessee needed that from Conway here. And he hits what three or four from three um, big back. I mean, what do you, I think he scored 17, of their, their final 19 points, something like that. And yeah, I mean, that's just, this was the ultimate. If you're banking on the, the, the potential of Tennessee and you're looking at what they're capable of, this was the game that showed you, this team is good enough to get to the final four. And we've seen some of those games this season. We just haven't seen them consistently. And that I think was the problem when you saw how game one went. And I said, Chris, I said, sometimes game one in the NCAA tournament can be the toughest. Remember, like we pointed out Auburn several years ago against New Mexico State. We pointed out some of these other SEC teams that have made a run. The first game's not always pretty, but if you survive in advance, you put yourself in this position. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll say one other thing before. I think sometimes we, covering the SEC, are so used to seeing teams be so physical with each other that we don't sometimes understand that when you play someone outside the league, it's a real We're guessing game. Used to it. <laughs> if those yeah. teams are going to be used to it, and boy, did Tennessee come out and they just they out physical Duke, and that was a big difference here. Yeah, I, if, a couple things. Uh, when Tennessee hits 43% of its threes and, what, 77% of its foul shots, balls are going to be really tough to beat. Number two, um, I think we worried a little bit about steadiness from the point guard position. Santiago Vescovi was just really, really good today. Tennessee turned it over, what, nine times? Yeah, nine times. Vescovi has played the point before. I mean, it, it's not like this is totally new to him. Would you rather have Ziegler? Yes, you would. But point being here, he did a really good job, man. This this team was just really solid today. They they got 
contributions from everywhere. Career game from Kumwa again. I'm, I'm getting repetitive, but I, I just was really blown away with how Tennessee played today. Yeah, and I mean, look, it, you know, obviously on the Duke side, you have to point out the fact that Mark Mitchell didn't play. And, you know, we talked about Duke's size. Obviously, he still had Lively, still had Filipowski out there, two seven-footers. But, you know, you do take away one of those guys at 6'8", um, you know, that can help them in, in several different areas. And I think, I don't know if you heard the stat, what a wild stat that was. I think it was Stan Van Gundy that said it. Duke is like 17-1, and 19-1 and one in the NCAA tournament. Don't quote me on this, but when they have their top six guys all available, but when they have one of those top six guys that does not play throughout the years, they're like seven and six or seven and seven. And so you think about just kind of the impact of the rotation and those kind of things. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't think we can just completely ignore that not having, you know, a guy like that, that I'm pretty sure has started every game this season can also take some, you know, some of the flow out of Duke. But at the same time, Tennessee was the one that I think did the, the majority of that just with the, the physicality they played with and, um, I mean, Chris, it started It started from the first two possessions because Zero's plastic comes yes, out there, yes, and did. boy, he is just – I mean, but look, that's what we expect from him. I know not all other SEC fans love it, uh, but, hey, I mean, that's just – that's what Tennessee does to you. There like will they, be elbows thrown. They, they are not afraid to be physical. And in this kind of tournament, if you're afraid to be physical and you're playing Tennessee, good luck because they can do what you just saw them do in this kind of game, they can really impact the game in so many ways with how they play defensively. Um, and like I said, I know not a lot of we, we've talked about games, right? Tennessee, Alabama, other games this season where it's just been, well, how do they, how do they do this? How do they get away with it? Well, I mean, look, it's, that's their style. Like, like they are just physical and they're physical from the first possession to the last possession. And that can wear on you. It's a grind to play Tennessee. And like we said, especially, if they're forcing you to – I mean, Duke turned it over 15 times today. Um, if Tennessee's forcing turnovers, if they're hit like you just said a minute ago, if they're shooting 43% from three, 77% from the free throw line, those three stats right there to me, it's a really hard challenge to beat that team if they're doing those three things. And, um, you know, especially when they have a guy like Kamwa step up and score 27 points. Well, one more thing. You, you mentioned Duke having the, the injury there. We've talked about Vescovy, excuse me, Ziegler being hurt, but let's not forget, and we've mentioned this many times, Tennessee had Vescovy miss several games with a shoulder issue. Phillips missed several games. Josiah Jordan James missed, I don't know, half the season almost, it seemed like. Yeah. You know, Ziegler not going to play again this year, but those other three guys, Tennessee's not had those guys on the floor more often than not together. And, Maybe you're seeing what Tennessee can be when when the balls are almost at a full deck of, of players. Well, and think about this. I mean, they they played nine guys today at double double digit minutes. Um, I think all nine guys that played played at least eleven a minute. Uh, Awaka played eleven minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, that's. I mean, think about that. Like they they got their their money's worth out of everybody who stepped on the floor that gave them a little something, whether it was a little bit of scoring, a little bit of rebounding, you know, forcing a turnover, getting a steal, all those things. Like, they they got that out of this group. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I look, Rick Barnes takes a lot of you-know-what, um, you know, for the NCAA tournament record and all this other stuff. But I think for this team to be now sitting in the position they're in, and let's call it what it is. I mean, the number one seed's out a very trendy eight seed that people were picking to, to beat the number one seed Memphis. They're out Duke's out final four pick for a lot of people. Tennessee will play the winner of Florida Atlantic and fairly Dickinson for a shot at the elite eight. Um, I mean, look, I'm not taking anything away from those other teams, but if you're, if you're Tennessee and you're asking for a better setup than you have right now going into it, I don't know that there is another than the one that you have at this very yeah. moment, just kind of sitting there in front of you. Um, just based on the matchups, just how they play defense. And like we said, playing teams that you just – it you don't see a team like Tennessee very often. And when they're hitting shots, when the offense – here was a tweet I used, Chris. I said, the defense has been predictable all season long. The offense has been unpredictable all season long. But if you, you, com you, you, know, you combine that offense into them 
you know, turning defense into offense and being able to hit jump shots, they're going to beat a lot of teams in the country. And you just, you had that set up today for them. And hey, they are marching on to the Sweet 16. Well, Tennessee is going to catch a break probably with Purdue getting knocked out. But tournament basketball, that's kind of what happens if you're going to make a deep run. A lot of times you are the beneficiary of. Someone somewhere getting upset. Tennessee is is going to probably get that. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't get a chance to catch FAU and Memphis. I really wanted to. I, I well, had FAU's a pretty good. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. And, and FAU, them, yeah. FAU, I think shoots a three pretty well. Lost three games. I mean, it, that that is not going to be a cakewalk for Tennessee, presuming FAU wins. But um, I was gonna say, I'm I'm happy for Rick Barnes, Blake. Um, I, I tend as I get older to root for people. And Rick Barnes, to me, is one of the more likable coaches in our league across the three sports we cover. Um, just a, a class dude, very well liked by a lot of people. Um, I like the way his players play. They play hard, but they're not, you know, their their kids are very likable, it seems to me like. And, and he is too, and – uh, I think when that game was over, one of the first things I thought is, hey, good good for Rick Barnes. He has deserved one or two of these. Yeah, no, you, you know where I stand on that. I've always been the be careful what you wish for uh, person when it comes to wanting to push someone like Rick Barnes out because you see the success year in and year out um, over the span of 30-something games. Hasn't always worked out for him in a you know survive and advance tournament setting, but um, to, to put his guys in that position – over a 35 game period in the regular season, that many years in a row, pretty much. Um, it's not easy to do. So, um, yeah. So I, I think, like you said, good for, good for him. I mean, good for, again, the entire roster, because I think, you know, we said just watching them up close, they're not the same team without secret, but they're just not, but that doesn't mean you can't win games. And that doesn't mean if you do the things well, that you do well and get a little extra something, out of you know a guy like again get something out of combo a game like this not that he can't you know score regularly but a game to that level where it just basically takes over the game down the stretch then that they are good enough to to get to the final four and like i mean you look at the way everything is kind of opening up now and i would venture to say that as of this moment i mean they may be the favorite to get there um, I, I know that Marquette's still there. I know Kansas State's still there. I know Kentucky's still there. But if you watch what they just did to Duke, who was the favorite for many people to get there, I don't see how you couldn't say that Tennessee is in prime position to have that opportunity again if they're able to put the offense together um, and, and avoid the stretches that almost cost them in game one. But they move beyond that. Guys stepped up and... Hey, good luck scoring 60 or more points on this team in this tournament because they are they are locked in on the defensive side. Yeah, Falls are now one game away from an Elite Eight, which would be the highest watermark Tennessee's ever reached. Some somebody this program's gonna get to the final four. Just could be this one. And it might be this one. Just it's too good. Of, Tennessee's too good of a program to have never been to a final four. And and, and who knows, maybe this is the year. Whether it is or whether it's not, we'll be here to cover it. We're covering every single SEC game or every single game in the NCAA tournament involving SEC teams. We will preview those games. We will recap those games. Best way to get that, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. That helps us get noticed a little bit. Blake, any parting thoughts? Uh, no, we'll have it all covered, as we said. And we got, um, obviously, we're doing previews and reaction to every SEC game in the tournament. So, yeah, um, we'll have it here. So hit that subscribe button. And um, yeah, if you're a Tennessee fan, enjoy it. Um, hey, you're in the Sweet 16 and um, you're on to the to the second weekend. So been keeping an eye on baseball, too. And now I'm going to go keep an eye on Arkansas, Kansas, which has started just Ooh. as we have started this uh, video, which I can't a, wait to see that one. Not a great start for Arkansas. We'll see how it turns no. out. All right. Well, thank you for watching. We are Southeastern 14 presented by Bearded Iris. We'll see you again soon.